I wish. Whoa, whoa! Is Disney back? I just got home from the theater after seeing Wish. It was full of heart, Disney Easter eggs, bold artistic decisions, and massive implications for the future of Disney. And boy, do I have some thoughts about the post credit scene. Welcome back to Channel 626. I'm Mitchell, and this is my instant reaction to Disney's latest animated movie, Wish. One of my absolute favorite things is discussing with my friends as I exit the movie theater what we just saw, talking about questions and lore and theories and all of that. I hope this can be a proxy for that so anyone who just came out of the theater can watch this and feel like they're a part of this community. Now, I'll do a full analysis and Easter egg breakdown in the coming days and weeks, but for right now, I just wanted to get a few quick thoughts out there. And warning, two things. One, this is going to contain spoilers for the entire movie. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want to be spoiled, save this, bookmark it, come back after you watched it. The second, I'm not going to do hardly any editing on this. I just want to get it out fast so people can watch it. My future videos will have all the editing and clips that you've come to expect from my channel. All right, let's dive right in with the things that really worked for me in this movie. And the very first thing is the music is amazing. This wish performed by Ariana DeBose absolutely stole the show. It was core to the plot and to the conclusion and was not surprisingly, my favorite. The song Knowing What I Know Now felt a little weird to me at first, but by the end, I didn't want it to stop. It was a showstopper, and I have been jamming to it ever since I left the theater. And then there's I'm a Star, which was sung by the Woodland Creatures. This one caught me off guard and honestly felt like something that would be in a Disney World ride. But if you look closely, this foreshadows the conclusion of the movie in the climax when they all sing and realize the central message of the movie that each one of us is a star. Those are my music highlights, but I loved all the music in this movie. The other thing I loved was the animation. Wow, it was beautiful. Some of the still photos that were circulating around before the movie came out made me a little worried about its quality and how it would feel in the theater. But once I got there, I was immersed in a new and beautiful world and it was incredible. I loved it. The characters were amazing and there were some very strong female protagonists like Asha, Dahlia, and the Queen. They were inspiring. I especially loved the Queen's story. She was so brave as she broke out of an abusive and manipulative relationship. She can be an inspiration to women and people everywhere who are dealing with abusive relationships in their own lives. When the people chanted long live the Queen after her triumph, I was touched. And another highlight was the diversity. I loved the representation in this movie. There were people who represented many social classes, nationalities, skin tones, ages, body types, and many more. It was great for representation. We certainly have a long way to go in this world for being more diverse and helping people see themselves in the media and art that they consume, but I thought this was a good step in the right direction. And finally, I enjoyed King Magnifico's arc. You know, he wasn't a great guy when we first met him, but to justify the truly evil acts that he performs at the end of the movie, we needed some other reason than he was just kind of a slimy guy, and they gave it to us as he, for as he dabbled in forbidden magic. That really gave us a thing we needed to hold on to, and you could see him sliding toward the dark throughout the movie. I thought that was well done, and they didn't go overboard with explaining the magic. They presented it in a way that was believable, but without dumping details on us, and I thought that was handled very well. Now let's talk about a couple of the things that didn't work as well for me. Now, I love the music and the animation in this movie. They were awesome. But at times, when the music and animation came together, it felt a little clunky, honestly. And I'm having a hard time putting my finger on it, but it felt like during some of the major musical numbers, the vocals from the artists didn't exactly line up with the animation. And it really took me out of it. I was mostly just visualizing the actors in a studio singing rather than feeling like it was a part of the story. This eventually got better throughout the movie, but for the first few musical numbers, it really was a little jarring. I also enjoyed the character of Star. He was so adorable and funny, and he stole the scene almost every time. We learned that he had the power to make animals and plants come to life and talk, and he even made inanimate objects like the oars of the boat row themselves. But his powers weren't really used in any other way to help the protagonist. For example, could he have given Asha the power to fly? Seems like that certainly would have been helpful throughout the movie, but we never really got an explanation for what Star's powers were. Now, I don't need a huge data dump here, but just some more clarity around what he could have done and why he wasn't doing more throughout the plot would have been nice. But I always loved a good Star appearance, 
and he was definitely adorable. Now with that, let's jump into some of the major Easter eggs that I spotted during this video. Again, I'm gonna go through a full Easter egg breakdown, but for now, I just wanna hit some of the really big ones that we'd be remiss to not discuss. All right, the most obvious one is Asha's friends. They clearly represent the seven dwarves. Dahlia is Doc, Simon is Sleepy, and we also see people who represent bashful, sneezy, happy, sleepy, and dopey. Yeah, I think I got them all. Look at them. Sleepy and Grumpy even get a shout out by name. You know, if you went into the movie looking for this, you definitely would have saw it. It was very present and could have enhanced your viewing experience. But if you didn't know that these seven friends were representing the seven dwarves, it probably would have just gone over your head. So I thought they handled that really well. Another big one is King Magnifico's love of mirrors, just like the evil queen in Snow White. We even get a famous mirror mirror on the wall quote. And at one point, King Magnifico absorbs three wishes into himself, and each one of those wishes represent a different Disney movie. The first one is clearly Peter Pan. We basically see Peter Pan in the wish itself, and then Neverland gets name dropped. The second one is Mary Poppins, where someone wishes for the perfect magical nanny for their kids. And the third one is a wish for true love, which could apply to a ton of different Disney movies, but I like to think that it's a reference to Snow White, who sings, I'm wishing for the one I love to find me today. And at the very beginning of the movie, Asha gives us a big musical number, singing about the settings and the people and the characters and everything about the movie just to kind of get us up to speed, in a very similar way to what Mirabelle does at the beginning of Encanto. At the end, Star returns to the sky so that other people can wish upon a star, confirming that all the Disney characters who wished upon a star previously were wishing upon this star that we just spent the entire movie with. That's really exciting, has some major implications, and leads me into the next section, which are some lingering questions that I have coming out of the theater. First of all, did we just witness Peter Pan's origins? At the end of the movie, a guy named Peter, dressed like Peter Pan, gets his wish fulfilled. And a girl dressed in blue comes up to him. Was that Wendy? This is crazy. If this is the beginning of Peter Pan and Wendy, wow, what does that mean? There's so much to dig into here. That It's a big question, really. And I want to explore it further and up. The second question has to do with the fact that Asha became a fairy godmother. But did she become the fairy godmother? The very one who appeared to Geppetto and Pinocchio and to Cinderella? It certainly seems like that's the case because she makes the exact same motions and it's the same animation as when Cinderella gets her new dress from her fairy godmother in the movie. It's not entirely clear, but it seems to be what they're setting up here. And third, we got a post credit scene. Wow, let's talk about it. So we see Asha's 100 year old grandfather at the end of the movie finally fulfilling his wish to influence the rising generation through music as he plucks away to the tune of When You Wish Upon a Star. Now my question here is, did he learn that from Jiminy Cricket? Did Jiminy Cricket learn it from him? Is this the origins of one of the most, if not the most iconic Disney song ever? Wow, there is a lot to unpack from this movie. I loved it, and if you haven't seen it yet, I certainly recommend that you go and watch it. I think you'll have a great time. It's full of heart and energy and fun and positive message. Kids and adults alike will really enjoy the movie, I think. So let's get into a few of my final thoughts here. First of all, I think this is the ushering in of a new era of Disney animated movies. The previous CEO, Bob Chapek, made some questionable decisions that led to poor results. For example, last year's Disney animation movie was Strange World, which I certainly thought was a good movie and I enjoyed going, but it didn't seem to meet Disney's high standards. Wish, on the other hand, does, in my opinion. And it seems like a watershed moment, kind of like how Tangled ushered in a new era of Disney movies, I feel like Wish might do the same. Look, there are flaws in every movie. I certainly understand that, and critics will have their critiques. But for me, I'd give this an 8.8 .8 out of 10, knowing that that score might rise or fall as I see it more often, which I definitely plan to do in the coming days. Look, if you're a true Disney fan, and I'm assuming if you made it to the end of this video, you are, you're going to like this movie. It's a love letter to Disney fans, and you'll be able to spot so many details that might just warm your heart. And definitely look through the credits. I love how they show so many Disney animated characters. It really is a great celebration of a hundred years of Disney animation. Look, my big analysis and breakdowns, they're coming. I'm gonna get working on them. But right now, if you want more Wish content, you can check out my trailer breakdown for Wish, which actually has a ton of details that I caught from the trailer that were in the movie and shows parallels between that and other Disney movies. I think you'll enjoy it. So make sure to check that out and stay tuned for the more detailed analyses that are coming soon. And until then, remember, there's no platypus controlling you. There's no platypus controlling me. No, it counts. It doesn't.